All right, first things first is you want to cut your bars into several nine centimeter pieces. So what I did was, is I took a piece of feeler gauge, I measured out nine centimeters, I cut it, that way I can use it as a template. Otherwise you have to make sure that your lines are exactly in the same spot each and every time. That just kind of throws everything off just a little bit. So what's more reliable for me is I just lay this on here, get it lined up with the end, mark my spot, there we go. And then what I do next is I cut it, and I get a piece about this size right here, and usually the ends, when after I cut it, because I use a big, um, with aluminum and these, these are small enough, I use bolt cutters to cut it. It is much easier to cut just with a pair of bolt cutters than using a saw or anything else. Just crimp it off at the end with the bolt cutters and move on with life. However, that does leave the end a little bit snaggled. So when I'm done with that, I just take it to the sander, sand that off flat real quick, and then I'm good to go. And so that'll be like right here too in this bar. So if this was the end piece right here, this piece is nice and smooth already. I smooth this one out on the sander right here. This piece is done, but over here, this piece has still has a snag on this end too. So you also want to sand down this part right here that's connected to your main bar still. That way it's nice and flat. That way next time you measure, you know this is on the definitive end of it and not somewhere that you're misreading with your eyes or because there's a little extra metal down there below it. Next, what you do is draw the holes on, um, on them all, except for one so, well actually first you want to pair them all up so you find all the ones that you've done Make sure some of them will just be a little bit longer than others. Pair them all up with ones that are similar size like this. Once you find your pairs, then you're gonna drill two holes on one side and one hole on the other side. And the way to do the holes, it's one centimeter from the end, dead center, as I measured that out on another piece right here. I drilled the hole already. And so same thing with my template here. I lay it on top. I find where it's at and then I go in and I do my hole and so what I do with that too because you want to make sure it's a nice a nice mark there solid that we can see the complete roundness of the hole so you know where the definitive center is like that and so now you can see it's a perfect center hole right there and so I'll do that I'll do that on the other end then after that what I do is I go through and I drill holes on, so here let me show you a pair. So here's a finished pair. This is what they'll look like when you're ready to drill your holes. So you drill your holes on this one, this one, and this one. That way, when they're done, you can clamp them together on that end right there, like I did right here. And now you still just have this hole ready. We do it in this order because we're doing this all by hand and we want to make sure everything fits perfectly right even up to our final hole until we draw our last hole because if we drill that hole beforehand and then we try to piece them together if this one's just a little bit off compared to this one it just won't work as well okay for drilling the second hole i tape up the other end after i put the screw in the one end and i tape it up that way i help it keep it as even as possible as i'm drilling that hole that way the edges are aligned. So I take tape it up, I poke a little hole through it before I start drilling, I add my lubricant, and then I drill my hole through. When I'm doing it, I also hold it on the sides just to make sure, because still sometimes you can see like this, they can move to the sides a little bit with that tape. So be careful as you're drilling your hole and be aware of that. All right, now that we have our second hole drilled, we want to make the mark th for our third hole. So what I did was, is I was actually able to leave that screw in for this. And it honestly, it's probably best to leave the tape on as well, just to keep everything nice and stable, just out of principle. But I don't think it matters a whole lot. But I put my ruler on here, and I line it up to both ends. And our pieces, our scales are supposed to be 9 centimeters. We see that is correct, so our center is 4.5. What I did was make a small mark before, before hole mark here. I made a small mark, and then I... Put my ruler on that small mark, made a line going straight across, that way I know that was the dead center. And then I took the same exact template I used before to make the holes on the sides here, and I lined that up. I'll zoom in here to show this. I lined this up with that line, so you can see through, there's the line for a center mark. Make sure it's nice and centered, and make our hole mark like we see here. 
And so after that, we can go ahead and add our um, second screw in because we want this nice and stable as we're drilling it so it doesn't move around. So your end result before drilling the third hole should look like this. The only part is, just got to remember, if you're using screws like me, these will make it a little unbalanced when you're drilling it. So make sure that there's something right here and these aren't wobbling as you're drilling. All right, now that we have our third hole here, we want to drill the uh, larger uh, hole right here towards the surface for the head of our screws. That way, when we put our screws in, they fit flush with the handle. So if I take my screw and I fit it upside down right here, you can see how the screw head disappears. So I know it'll fit flush. So you drill that hole, that way when you uh, stick it in right here, like that, your screw head fits flush. And that's perfect because we'll then screw our uh, handle together without the pick in for the remainder of finishing this off. So go ahead and take your screws and both your scales and screw them completely together like this without your pick handle, without the pick in it. And I'll leave it like that so you can't see the pick. So like that, and what you'll do now Actually, you need to use a template if you want your sides rounded or the, your ends rounded like I usually do. You can take a template, just like I did with the holes, and you can stick it, stick it on the edge right there and uh, trace it. That way you can get your uh, rounded edges right there. Or you can, uh, I have, I'll have this template online. Um, I have a 3D template here. That way it'll fit perfectly. If you want to do that to completely sit on top of your scales to trace that, you can do that as well. But anyways, you'll do that. Then yeah, you'll take your pick when it's uh, completely together. You'll just draw it. You only need to draw um, the rounded part on one on one of the sides of the scales, not both, because it's screwed together. And then you'll take it and you will go to your sander and round off your edges to those lines that you draw on right there. So again, do the just a quick rundown. Do your kind of your holes right there that little uh sunken in part so the heads of the screws will fit in nicely right there then screw it completely together without your pick in it draw the rounded edges on and sand the rounded edges down it's easier when they're uh, screwed together that way you know it's even on both ends that's why we do that and again i will put this template on thingiverse so now you should have your scales completely screwed together your ends rounded off right there. Next thing we're gonna do is round off all the edges. So if we zoom in right here, you can see how this edge is no longer sharp. We're taking off all the squareness of it. That way when we're sanding later, it's easier on us. And the way I do this to get started anyway, as you see, I have a four by 36 belt sander. So that makes it easy for me. So I turn it on, I lay it like that just for a second. I lay it like that to take the sharp, the edges off both those sides, that, that, get all the sides right there. And then for the ends right there, I do it with a little bit of a wrist flick almost. So you can stick it on one end and just kind of roll it like that. One end and just kind of roll it like that. And then roll, roll. And then when you're done, it should look like this where it's mostly rounded off all over the pick and all you have left, if you're using your screws that you should be, that should be sunk into your handle, unlike this one right here, is doing the final sanding. And so you'll then go through all your grits and sand it up till it's finally polished. All right, so when I'm sanding, I take it through about a grit of 3,000, maybe up to 5,000, depending on which, which metal I'm working with. At 5,000 is probably not necessary. Someone in the comments, please correct me. I am not an expert on this at all. Um, but yeah, I take it to about there, then I hit it with an um, electronic buffing wheel, then I hit it with about two or three different grits of liquid polish to get it to a nice shine right here. And so, um, yeah, uh, the different metals that I've tried and used. So throughout this video, the first ones I've tried were steel. And steel with this thickness, about a quarter inch right here, steel feels good. It has great feedback but about a quarter inch thickness, it starts to feel a little bit heavy. And so that's the same with bronze, uh, this aluminum bronze right here and brass as well. So these heavier metals, I actually like them when they're about a 3 16 of a thickness right here. So 3 16 feels really good for uh, these thicker handles for the optimal feedback. It's a little bit more, they still feel great, but I do notice just a little bit of dulled feedback and same with the bronze aluminum here. 
uh, with the aluminum themselves, you can go up to a full quarter inch and you don't lose the feedback. They, they absolutely feel great. That's because they're just not so dense. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when you're doing your metals. If you have a machinist friend, I am very fortunate enough to have someone in Seattle that uh, is learning to do some machine work and has done a couple of handles for me and has some more on the way. Have them do some aluminum for you and you'll get your holes perfect and you can just get this all done for you. And that way you can see even just the machined, I don't, this looks cool to me. I don't have to shine this or anything if I wanted to make the sides a little bit nicer. They were learning, so yeah. If I wanted to make the sides nicer, I could do that if I wanted to. But yeah, if you have a machine, it works great. And you can also get the different thicknesses that way. So with aluminum too, 3 16 feels just as, or I would say, obviously, a little bit better than the quarter inch. But it has great feedback on the aluminum as well. But with the aluminum, you can go just a little bit thicker. Anyways, um, I hope this helped you. Uh, the inter interchangeable handles are priceless to me. Ever since I've started making these metal ones, metal is hard work and metal is hard work. I have a lot of appreciation for people that do metal work now. But ever since I do have these, um, or if I wanted to do some in stronger woods, I don't use my other picks as much anymore. So all my pretty picks that I've made and stuff, these are all just kind of sitting around because I don't want to screw them up because I can just use these nice interchangeable handles and just slap a new... Um, you know, manufacturers pick in it whenever I want. So these handles are for life and I don't have to worry about ruining, oh man, my nice pretty picks. I still need to use them out of principle, but yeah, now all I have to do, I have handles for life. I just buy a, a new manufacturer's pick without their handles on it, uh, punch a couple holes in it and put it in there. One last topic I wanted to talk about, which I realized was a pretty important subject that I've already been getting questions about, are bolts used and fasteners um, used for the interchangeable handles. And we use what are called Chicago screws. That is where um, one side is a screw and the other side has a post like so that they can uh, screw into each other like that. And so, yeah, these are Chicago screws. And Wint, uh, <clears throat> offers some great Chicago screws. Fantastic. They have, let's see, got them right here. Oops, sorry about that. You can see that um, the, I forget the, the whole size, but this is four millimeter in length and the head of the screw is what makes it so nice. It is a very shallow head. So you don't have to drill deep to make these heads of these screws sit flush with the handle. These are really nice screws. I love them a lot. But these are the four millimeter ones and these are the two millimeter ones offered by Vint. And you can also get them in silver back here. Uh, these right here are just extra big ones, but those are the smaller two millimeters in there as well. And also, um, you can get uh, bigger Chicago style screws as well. And the smallest, <laughs> larger size uh, Chicago style screws I found were eight millimeter heads and then four millimeter posts. So that means the post inside here is four millimeters, excluding the length of the head right here on both ends. So that's something I'll get to in just a second. With your screws, again, remember, uh, use screws when you're sanding and uh, doing your polishing. Use these screws, the final types of screws that you're going to use. That way uh, it all comes and turns out all right, just looks much better. Keep them in a bag like these. These are your screws that you're sacrificing now whenever you're making those handles with these screws in them. So yeah, I've got some bigger ones over here I made them with, and I also got some wind style ones over here. So the handles and the screws that I use. So. I mentioned I love the one fourth diameter, and even though I love it, I ran into some issues with screws trying to fit inside of it. So the Wint screws, they actually um, almost fit perfectly uh, flush. I just think I need to go a little bit deeper. So if I show you, I have them, yes, on one side here, and it looks like it fits kind of flush with this uh, quarter inch uh, handle with the pick in it. However, I just didn't drill the holes quite deep enough, and I think it needs to go just a little bit more slightly deeper than flush in order for these screws to fit. And that's not a knock on uh, winter or anything, it's just that's the size metal bar that I bought, and so that's just the way it's going to be. And so what I had to do is I ended up having to um, take the post 
uh, part of the winch screw and finding a um, another screw that would fit it that just had a little bit longer end on it like that and that's how I made it work so the winch screws they are gorgeous the screw part of part of them is actually really small though so when it goes in it doesn't even go that far in so that is something that um, I'm not sure where they order them from I'm not sure if they can get that a little bit longer but that would actually be helpful <laughs> if you guys can do that so if you're watching this if you can get a longer post uh, screw post on that that would be freaking awesome uh, otherwise yeah their screws are amazing uh, you just might have to drill on a quarter inch handle so it's a little bit deeper for the head of the post in order for it to connect and fit nicely and with the uh, I think it's the 3 16th uh, thickness handle for your heavier metals there. The wind screws, they, they work perfectly here. I don't know uh, the reason being why I use the the black screws on this. And oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Because I ran out of wind screws at the time. <laughs> and I ordered just, a, as you can see, a crap ton more. So yeah, I actually need to switch these out for the wind screws. But the wind screws uh, fit great in these. Um, one thing I noticed is I couldn't use the uh, the smaller size ones. They are... Uh, I had to get the four millimeter size uh, post for the wind screws. And even then a little bit, uh, I had to do a little bit of modifying because you can see it's just almost just a little bit too long. So what I had to do was go through and on the screws, I uh, sanded down the post a little bit to make it shorter. That way it would fit tightly. So that's what I did for that. So yeah, the wind screws are amazing. And then the big screws here, that's... Um, those are the first screws I used. I used them on all of my um, aluminum handles, actually, just because I also didn't have any wind screws at the time. And I was trying to find a way to get it to work um, uh, bulk and without having to order from overseas. But yeah, these, these screws work all right. The problem is their heads are very, they have a deep head on them up here. So you have the four millimeters right here, plus the head thickness. So they stick out from a quarter inch handle pretty well. And this one's actually thicker than quarter inch. So when I did this too, so when I used these screws, not only did I have to drill a deeper hole right here for the head to fit flush, I also had to um, sand down the post a little bit to make it fit flush with these. That way it wouldn't be sticking out and loose. So... That's what I've experienced with the um, the Chicago screws and stuff so far um, with the measurements that I use for handles. So you might have to do a little bit modifying the screws to get them fit just perfectly. Um, I hope this helps you all. Uh, it's definitely something I almost left out and didn't think about adding. And yeah, questions came in. Uh, thank you, Rook, and everybody else for asking questions. So um, I hope this helps. So now for putting a pick inside of our new handles. And so first of all, we need a hole punch. You can find one of these for about $35, $40 on eBay. I was told by Picksmith, uh, he recommended, um, it's a hand hole punch. He recommended to buy a cheap one of these and then buy a good expensive set of dies. That way you're, um, they will last much longer. And I think I'm agreeing with him because this is my second one of these um, because I have worn these out. So yeah, that's all you need is a hole punch and then a, um, a needle file, just a round needle file. And I'll show you why shortly. Anyway, so I'm going to show you how we're going to change this one out right here. So we're going to move this old pick right here. And let's zoom in. Here we go. So we have our screws already out. There are scales and we need a Sharpie. We can see that I am using a law lock tool. <clears throat> that is... Um, uh, one of my favorite brands to use so far. So all I do is I flip over a scale, place it on top um, to the best of my ability, try to get it as centered as much as I can, see how much I want sticking out at the top right there. I think that's good right there. And the main part is getting the top lined up first. There we go. Make sure it's at least somewhat centered in the back right there. You all are a little bit different angles, so it may not look like it to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
draw that hole right there in the front, and I'm also going to draw that line back there. So we have the first hole to punch, and I know where I can clip the end off right here so this pick will fit in here. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna go take my hole punch, I'm gonna punch this hole right here, and I'm either gonna grind this end off, or I'm gonna take a pair of metal cutters or something and clip this off. All right, I got the hole punched and the end clipped off. After you punch the hole, typically the punch pushes some metal through the other side. So I use a high grit sandpaper like 60 to sand that side down. And it doesn't matter because it's gonna be covered up anyway. So our next step is to take one of our screws right here. Ignore the black ones, they're separate. These are before I got the correct ones for this. I should actually change them out now. And then put it together like that. That way you can move your pick in the back right here to line it up. So you move your pick so it's lined up. Let's see, make sure it's lined up in the back there so we have it nice and straight. There we go, make sure you don't move it. There we go, we're good. And then draw your second hole on the far end, the opposite end, so not the middle. Uh, I'm not sure if it totally matters, but this is how I've done it so far and it's been flawless. So there you go. If you get that one, again, uh, rinse and repeat, punch the hole. This time, after we punch the hole, we're going to come back, we're trying to make it fit. If it doesn't fit uh, perfectly, because the hole might be just a little off, we're gonna take our file here and sand it just where we need it to, to make it fit. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm back with the second hole punch, so I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna put the first one back in the first hole like that, and now take a screw and try to fit it in the newest hole and see if it fits. Let's see, it looks like it is probably a little bit off. Yep, we can see it's a little bit off, so I'm gonna remove the screw, see if I can see where it looks like. It looks like a little bit in that top right corner up there sticking out. So what I'm gonna do, yep, that top right corner. So what I'm gonna do is I take my file right here and I'm gonna file it up here. Try to make it quick. I'll zoom through this part of the video if it takes too long. And hopefully without stabbing myself, there we go. So let's try it now and see if it fits. This is the tedious part of it. Um, however, I mean, once you make the, the handles, you make the handles, you just have to do this whenever you want a new pick as all. And so close. So you can see I need just a little bit more right there towards the top. Yep. Oh, there we go. I can kind of force it. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to file just a little bit more towards the top in there. So I have to quite push it in. But now that I have that in, I can mark my third hole right here. And all I'm going to do with my third hole is exactly the same thing. I'm going to punch my third hole, come back, put both of these in. If that hole's off a little bit, we have both of these holding it in place. So I can mark it with my marker a little bit more, take it out, file it down to make it completely fit, and then put it together. So let me come back with my third hole. So yeah, now back with the third hole. So again, put the first two on. First one's on, second one's on now. It looks like the third one might be perfect fit, but oh man, if I get that perfect, that would be, oh shoot, that last one fell out. So it's not quite perfect. So what I'm gonna do is pick it out, look at it, see where it's sticking out on the side a little bit. So it looks like, yeah, it's, sometimes it's easier to see through the other side. So I need to file it that part a little bit. And I mean, just a little bit and then I'll fit together. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, so I'm back and I got it to fit. So yeah, I just had to file it down a little bit until I got it to fit, that nice, perfect fit. And then um, once we get it there, we just have to slap it in our handles like so and add our screws on the other side there and we are good to go. And we have, again, yeah, add the screws to the other side and we're good to go. So we have a new, new pick. So all you have to do whenever you want a new pick, you have the handles for life, just punch the holes, get them to fit properly, and you have an amazing, especially if you made them out of metal, um, an amazing feedback and a really good, comfortable pick. Alrighty one, I hope this helped. Um, 
uh, if you make something, uh, some interchangeable handles, please tag me in social media and uh, show me what you got. Thanks for watching.